This is One Man's Family. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today, transcribed, we present Chapter 13, Book 71, entitled End of a Summer Saga. In just a little while, all the barbers are going to arrive back in San Francisco. Vacation at the Sky Ranch finished for another year. Just now, at the top of the family home at Seacliff, Joan is packing her bags and saying goodbye to Paul. Paul, will you help me close this suitcase? My goodness, somebody's going to have to sit on it. What happened? I don't know. When I moved over here, everything went in. What's this sticking out the side there, Joan? Oh, yeah. That's it. Now, when I press down on the lid, you snap it shut, huh? If you can press it down. Here we go. Close the snap, huh? Ah, good. Now, I'll press on this other side a little more. And... <coughs> there. Well, I guess that's all of me, Uncle Paul. All put away and ready to be sent home. Not all of you, honey. All that counts. I disagree. I have a theory that when a person's been happy and well-loved, they leave something of themselves behind. An aura, a vagrant perfume. Something like a memory, only more substantial. You mean the ghost of Joan will still be here to haunt you? Maybe she will. Shall I close your other case? Oh, not yet. I'm sure to find something else I've overlooked. Well, there's no hurry. Sit down and take a blow. You've been buzzing ever since you got up this morning. Uh, yeah. I suppose they'll all be arriving from the Sky Ranch pretty soon. Yeah, I suppose so. Golly, it was fun having a job and going down to work with you. I enjoyed it, too. I just dread the thought of going back to school. Uh, look ahead. Another year you'll be in college. You'll like that. I guess so. Uh, Uncle Paul. Yes? This is the most wonderful summer I ever had. Oh, I love being up here at the top of the house in Teddy's room, right next to your studio. Well, think what you've done for me. It wasn't boring for you having me around? What? The feeling you had to be here every night with me forever on your hands? You don't want me to go over that again, do you? You know I had the time of my life that I enjoyed having you, and I'd have been very lonesome without you. There, that's the last time I'm going to say it. All right. Oh, I've got something for you. I almost forgot. Oh, uh, just a minute, Uncle Paul. Oh, here yeah, now, Joe. Oh, it isn't anything, really. Just a gag, kind of. I should have had it wrapped up and made it look more like a present. Well, I can't see it behind your bag. Here. It's a picture. I had it framed. Why, Joe. Picture of you and me. Oh, it's just a snapshot. I had enlarged. Why, it's perfect. Thank you. When was it taken? Oh, remember when Ken took that snap of us out of the airport about two weeks ago at lunchtime? Oh, you've written on it. To my Uncle Paul, who helped me find myself. Much love, Joe. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. It was such a thoughtful thing to do. You know, ever since I've been in Teddy's room, I'm, I felt a little jealous of all those pictures of you and her. It won't be so bad now that I have a picture, too. Do you think I'm awful to have a feeling like that about Teddy? Why, of course not. You know what I was thinking now? What? The tremendous strides you've made. It's wonderful. I can't get over it. At the beginning of summer, you couldn't have said the things you've just told me, you know? About Teddy, you mean? Oh, that and a lot more besides. Remember when you moved in up here several weeks ago, how you asked me questions about those pictures of Teddy? Yes, and I felt jealous then, but I didn't want to let you know it. Exactly. Now you're not afraid to talk about it. How much healthier that is than to push the thought down and feel that it was wrong to have such a feeling. Uh, yes, you come along, honey. Uh-oh. Hey, in there. Oh, golly, they're home. Come on in. Well, hi, Cliff. Hi, kids. We just got in from the Sky Ranch. Vacation's over. Are Claudia and Nikki downstairs? They were behind us driving down. They might not have arrived yet. I don't know whether they were going to stop by here or not. I imagine they went right on to your place, Joe. Well, I was hoping they'd stop here. Well, i got to help Dad with bags and stuff. I just ran in to tell you we'd arrive. Oh, he'll be with you right away and lend a hand. Okay. How's Mom? Oh, she's fine. She went right over to Jack and Betty's to help with the triplets and the rest of the kids. I'll see you downstairs. Yeah, leave the door open, Claire. Yeah, well, Joan, I guess there isn't anything more for us to do up here. Should we take my bags down now? Oh, I'll run up and get them later. Why don't we go down and help out? I'll run you over to your house if Claude and Nicky don't come by. All right. Huh? What's the matter, honey? I wish I didn't have to go back home. I've been so happy up here next to you. I know, but you remember all our talks about looking at things realistically? Making an effort to distinguish between our childish, immature dream world and... The world we have to live in, remember? Yes, Paul. Well, this is a test. Up here with me represents your dream world. Going home represents reality. You belong with your mother, Nikki, and they need you. And after a little, 
You're going to find that you need them, too. Oh, it isn't that I don't love them. I, I do. I love them more than I ever have. I think it... Well, it's just that well, not being here in the evening to talk to you anymore, to put your pajamas out for you, to have breakfast together and rush off to work. I'm going to miss it like anything. That's just temporary. You're going to find a lot of new things to replace all that. You're going to have a whole new outlook with your mother and Nikki. You're going to find that they can be fun to do things with, too. I'm going to try, and I, I do want to make them happy. You want to make them happy? You see? Already you're thinking of them and not yourself. Wonderful. Uh, don't worry. You're going to be okay. Believe me, you are. Come on. We're going downstairs, huh? Mm, yes, Uncle Paul. It's funny how sure I am of everything when I listen to you. Two cars and a station wagon sped down Skyline Boulevard from the Sky Ranch earlier this morning, and the barber's summer holiday is over. Now, back at the family home, Father Barber is furiously dialing the phone in the library while Cliff, Paul, Andy, and Joan carry up the luggage, which is then deposited in the front hallway. Fanny! Oh, Fanny! Cliff said she went across the hedge to Jack's house, Dan. What? What's that for? Mom's helping Betty and Nicolette get the children set. Oh, fine. Oh, splendid. And my things scattered from here to breakfast. Uh, hello, Pinky. Oh, Hank. Well, whichever one it is, let me speak to your mother. Hey, Dad, Andy's to have the room next to mine. Jack's old room, isn't he? I presume so, Clifford. If your mother would stay around home for two and a half minutes instead of rushing off every time the triplets utter a whimper, we'd know where... Oh, uh, hello. Hazel? Well, we'll get things stored away. Hazel, in order to locate my possessions, I've got to be a Pinkerton detective. Well, I want to ask you, were you not in the kitchen at the Sky Ranch when I came out there this morning? I asked for a few yards of brown wrapping paper and wrapped up my hammock. Do you remember? Huh? Well, somebody was in the kitchen. I thought it was you. I wrapped it up, put a card on it that said Father Barber's Hammock and carried it out to the front porch and put it with all that big pile of stuff. And now, apparently, it wasn't put in my car. Huh? I know everybody's busy, Hazel, but I'm not going to have the same trouble again next year. I'm going to put the hammock away right now so we'll know where to find it. All right, all right. I'll phone around and see, see whose car they put in. Uh, who slammed that door? Sorry, Dad. Andy just went out. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Oh, we have a, a boy in the house now, Hazel. Hey. Oh, she hung up. A good father trains his son not to slam doors, Clifford. I get right on it, Dad. You find the hammer? No, I did not find the hammer. Who are you calling now? That's a very reasonable question, Clifford. I have not been home five minutes, and now I'm folding my wife, who has a way of vanishing into thin air. She's over at Jack and Betty's helping Nicolette. I know, I know. Anytime she's missing, she's over at Jack and Betty's. Oh, hello. Who is this? Oh, Nicolette. Let me speak well, to my wife, if you don't mind. upstairs, Clifford. Oh, thanks, Joan. I get this little bag. That's all, I guess. Though, that linen is hazel. Somebody left it here by mistake. Oh, gee, I've enjoyed being in Teddy's old room this summer. Were you leaving here today? Mm, I guess so. There's a general feeling in the air that a girl ought to live with her own father and mother. Instead of uh, uncles and grandparents, all of whom are softies, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, is this your room now, Uncle Cliff? Yeah, it's pretty nice, isn't it? You know, when I got back from the hospital and saw the wallpaper change and that new rug, I couldn't figure out what had happened. It was as if the room had been redecorated overnight. But they said it had been changed four years ago when I moved over with you folks at Nicky and Claudia's. You still haven't any memory of all those lost 11 years? Not one wisp of memory. Oh, this is going to be Andy's room. Jack's old room. Oh, keen. Oh, it's a nice room for a boy right next to his dad. Oh, we'll sure miss Gibby. I mean, Andy over at our house. But he'll like this. Hey, Joan, where are you? Oh, in here, Paul, in Andy's room. <laughs> Turmoil downstairs. <laughs> With Dad in the middle, I bet. Claudia's line is busy and Dad's pacing the carpet. What the dickens happened to his package, anyhow? Um, I didn't see it. Oh, look, Uncle Paul. This is going to be Andy's room. Yeah, I'm going to build in some bookcases over there for him, Paul. And I swear to you, I'm going to read aloud to him every night. Books like Hans Brinker and Tom Sawyer and The Three Musketeers. And... Oh, hey, um, what happened to the copy of Treasure Island? It was with my stuff, wasn't it? Oh, Cliff, I'm sorry. What? I thought that was Pinky's book. I put it in Hazel's car. Oh, that's all right, Joan. All of us are at sixes and sevens today. I'll run over to Hazel's and get it after a while. Now, whose book is this? Oh, Pinky, Margaret, whose copy of Treasure Island... It disappeared, Hazel. 
Honestly, Dan, now where have they gone? Don't they realize all these things have to be put away? You know, Hazel, I was just standing here wondering about that, and I think I'm going to be charitable. Now, what's that mean? Well, I was trying to put myself in their place when I was a youngster. <laughs> I remember we'd come home from a summer trip, unload on the back porch, and all of a sudden I'd get an unbearable yearning to see Stinky Peters. <laughs> Who? Oh, Stinky Peters. He was my boyhood pal. His uh, father was a tanner. Oh, I see. <laughs> Well, they've gone, but there's nothing to worry about. You know when we'll see them again? Uh, as soon as they're hungry. Right as rain. You've answered the question, lady. You win the jackpot. And here it is. Four suitcases, two sleeping bags, a saddle, boots, Pinky's box of pine cones. What in the world do you suppose he brought those home for? Who knows? Blankets, towels, soil, laundry. Well, Dan, let's get at it. Say, here's an idea. We can put the kids' stuff right smack in the middle of the living room floor and see how long they'll walk around it. Well, we'll have to move it for the Christmas tree in December anyway, so we might as well take it upstairs right now. <laughs> oh, hello. Here comes Claudia up on the porch. Door's unlocked. Come on in, Claudia. Did you say to come in? In here, Claudia. You'll find us under the luggage. Isn't it a mess, though? How did everything get so mixed up this year? The small helping hands of many children. <laughs> how true. And where are they now? Ah, yes. Not a chick, no child on the horizon. <laughs> Isn't it always that way? Always. Oh, Hazel, here's your compact. It got in my bag somehow. Oh, Dan. Uh, and Dan's hat. And isn't this Margaret's underwear? <laughs> I'm afraid it is. <laughs> and whose T-shirt? Hank's. Oh, dear. I suppose you've heard the latest catastrophe in the family, Claudia. Oh, no. What now? Father's lost his precious hammock again. Oh, no, not again. It rounds out the summer beautifully, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I was in the kitchen up there when he came out and got some wrapping paper. And you should have seen the card he printed. Father Barber's Sky Ranch Hammock Do Not Touch. Do Not <laughs> Touch. <laughs> With exclamation marks all over it. So I presume nobody touched him. <laughs> I don't know what we'd ever do without him. Isn't he wonderful? Oh, poor Dad. Has he forgiven Margaret yet? No. And, you know, I really think something's happened this time. Well, if I heard a little girl say she had me right in her pocket, I think it might cool down my ardor just a little. I hope Margaret learns a real lesson from this. I did feel sorry for her, though, when we left this morning. Did you see what happened, Claudia? No. When? Well, Father was trying to make up his mind which car might travel at the more sensible speed. <laughs> I know. He finally decided on Nicky's station wagon. I didn't know why he selected him. On basis of common sense driving. Well, anyway, Dan and I watched Margaret. She followed him around like a shadow. Mm, unrequited love. I'll say it was. And then when Mother and Father got into the station wagon, she stood almost in front of it, idly looking off toward the mountains, scuffing one shoe, swishing her skirt a little, waiting for him to call to her. Poor darling. Hazel, he just doesn't realize how severely he's punishing her. That's our father. He never does anything in half measures. If he loves, he loves wholeheartedly. If he indulges, he overindulges. And when he becomes the disciplinarian, he's the strictest martinet of them all. Did Margaret cry? No, she didn't, Claudia. She carried it off like a little trooper. We had a dry-eyed, silent trip down. I suppose in a way it's good for her. She's had this coming for a long, long time. She's been so high-handed and superior about her grandfather. But it catches your throat to have to watch it. You see, Claudia, she'd got to the place where she was actually flipped with Hazel and me. We couldn't do anything with her. She'd, well, take this Friday evening movie stuff. We'd say no, she couldn't go to a movie. Then she'd slip out of the house unnoticed, and the next thing we knew, there'd be a phone call from Father Barber. Hmm. Yes, he'd say, Margaret and I are going downtown to see a Disney. Home early and hang up. Uh-oh. You don't suppose she's wormed her way back in? I'll get it. He's a remarkable old gent in every way. I love him. But there are times when I... When you what, Dad? Oh, when I think it might be a good idea to get off by ourselves for a summer. You know, just our own household. Mm -hmm. We tried it once. No good? Well, you spend half your time wondering what's happening back home, and you pull up stakes early so you can find out. For you, Claudia. Nicky. Oh, did you say what he wanted? No, but he sounds very cheerful. Well, good, then nobody's broken a leg. He's probably wondering why I haven't got back home. Well, he didn't sound like a husband feeling sorry for himself. Yes, Nicky? Oh, he did? Hmm. <laughs> Yes, I guess he's been raising the roof with everybody. Hmm? Well, there's no point in my calling him. I don't know where the hammock... You what? <laughs> oh, Nicky, if that's true, it's wonderful. Well, did you tell Dad I was over here? <laughs> Maybe he'll call me here then. 
I'll suggest that he phone the ranch. All right, darling, thanks. Hmm? I'll be home in a little. <laughs> Bye. Well, something certainly struck you, honey. <laughs> Dad's still on a phoning bin, determined to find his hammock or know the reason why. He called Nicky? He talked to Nicky, but he actually wanted me. Have you ever noticed when he's out of temper, he makes an attempt first to get a hold of his own children, not his in-laws? Oh, I hadn't thought of that, but you're right. He calls here sometimes and asks for Hazel. If she doesn't happen to be in, bang, up goes the receiver. <laughs> sometimes I've had to wait two days to find out what was eating. If he was five years old, you'd call it petulance. And look under P in your handbook, How to Handle a Problem Child. <laughs> well, he finally broke down and told Nicky he's looking for the hammock. <laughs> Sharing his pitiful secret. <laughs> and Nicky called here because after Dad hung up, he remembered something. Just before he locked up, he was giving Ben some last-minute instructions in the kitchen. And he says Ben was leaning both elbows on a big brown paper parcel. Sure. <laughs> Don't tell me history's repeating itself. How ridiculous can things get? When we left for the Sky Ranch in June, Father raised Ned with everybody because he was sure he'd left the hammock in the storage room. And all the time, he'd given it to Margaret to keep mm-hmm. for him. Now, this fall, he leaves the hammock at the Sky Ranch, and once again, he's holding his family at fall. Hey, Claudia, that's your car outside? Oh, no, I'm not driving back to the Sky Ranch tonight. Dan, you're not serious. Did I mention the Sky Ranch? However, how about all of us going over to the family home for a little commiseration with Father Barber and his present misery? <laughs> you mean and incidentally reveal that his hammock is right where he left it on the kitchen draining board? Oh, that's dirty. Oh, not at all. Father Barber's full of perplexity and mental disturbance. We'll simply put him out of his misery. There it is. And when you get through with that telephone, Clifford, if you ever do, I should like to use it. Um, now, what did you say, Roberta? Claudia's over at Hazel's. I, I want to talk to you. Just a second, Dan. Um, what's that, Roberta? If people wouldn't all try to help to uh, Roberta, just a second, please. Dad's talking to me. Hey, Dad, I'll be through here in just a minute. I can't hear what she says. Huh. Yes, Roberta? But you have another date. Oh. With Professor who? Parker? Oh, I see. Oh, anthropology, huh? Oh, shucks, no, I don't know anything about anthropology. Huh? Well, I'm not going along with... Well, I hadn't planned to bring Andy anyhow. He's going to have a regular bedtime school, you know. A good deal of this. You could tell her when you see her. But, okay, if you've got another date, Roberta, I... Hey, um, what's his Parker's first name? Wilbur, huh? <laughs> Wilbur Parker, I see. Well, um, suppose I call you more. Oh, we're all fine. We're just getting unpacked now. Uh, oh, hey, Dad. Let me speak to her. Hello, Roberta. We can't find anything. The children helped load the cars. Yes. Oh, Dad. <laughs> Let me take that. <laughs> well, Dad wants to use the phone. You all right, darling? Have fun. Bye now. <laughs> About time. I liked it best in the days when you could just pick up the telephone and say, Operator, oh, now I've made a mistake. Well, if you're trying to locate Claudia, never mind. She just drove up in front. Huh? Oh, good, good. Dad, did you ever hear of a Professor Wilbur Parker at the university? Hey, uh, uh, Hazel and Daniel and Wizard. Oh, Dad, I asked if you No, ever... we'll get somewhere. Hello, anybody home? In the library, Claudia. Uh, come along, all of you, in the library. Hello, Father. Hello, Clifford. Hi, Father Barber. Yes, yes. Claudia... When we packed up at the Sky Ranch, I had a big brown bundle with a card on it that said, Father Barber's Hammock, do not touch. And somebody loaded it before I could get around to do it myself. Aren't you even going to ask us to sit down? Where's Mother? Oh, we can keep track of your mother. Uh, yes, yes, sit down. Well, when I put the bundle on the porch, I specifically told everyone not to touch it because I hadn't decided which car I'd drive. Um, I didn't see it, Dad. Uh, somebody must have seen it. Sorry, Dad, I, I didn't see it, really. What's wrong, Cliff? Why so somber? Oh, well, hi, Claude. How's my twin? Now, listen to me, Claudia. Don't just toss it away like that. I didn't see it, Dad. I don't want to go through this trouble every year trying to find my hammer. Well, why don't you call the Sky Ranch and ask Ben if you forgot it? I didn't forget it, Hazel. I put it on the front porch. Then, in the last minute of turmoil and confusion, just as we were driving out, I glanced back at the porch and everything had been taken off. So I presumed that it had been put in Nicholas's station wagon. Oh, that reminds me... I should have told Ben to have that sun porch rug cleaned. Um, may I use the phone? Huh? Yes, yes, go ahead. Hazel, 
I don't know why your mother has to spend so much time at Jack and Betty's. I wish you'd speak to her. I thought you said you didn't know where she was. Huh? When did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's so, so humorous. If she would tend to my affairs once in a while, I might know where things are so I could put my hands on uh, Operator, Omar 16011. Huh? Daniel, what are you grinning at? Well, I guess I'm just glad to get home, Father Barber. Everything seems so normal. Do you have to grin like a Cheshire cat just because things are normal? Uh, Father, uh, where's Paul? Oh, he and Joan are getting the last of her things. Uh, Ben? Hello, Ben. Mrs. Lacey. Um, I want to talk to you about the the rug in the new porch. Yes, the children tracked in on it. Oh, good, Ben. I did? Well, I'd forgotten I spoke to you. Uh, Ben, by the way... Father Barber had a big brown parcel. Oh, that's nonsense, Claudia. What would he know about uh, it? He's positive. He put it on the front porch. It was his hammock. It's where? In the kitchen, right where he left it? Huh? I see. Uh, Dad, would you speak to Ben? He has something to tell you. Uh, oh, very well, very well. Well, Ben. Yes, yes. Yes, I see. All I know is that I had it on the porch. Then somebody moved it into the kitchen. Oh, Paul. Hey, Dad. All right, Ben. You, you bring it down when you come. Yes. Goodbye. I'm going over and get your mother and see if we can't get this place straightened around. But Father, what about the hammer? I can't possibly settle down and be quiet until your mother's right here where she belongs. Everything goes wrong the minute she leaves the house. But you've located the hammock all right, Dad. I don't want to hear any more about that hammock ever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, poor father. I wonder what had happened if he ever admitted to anybody that he'd been wrong. Well, that would be the brave new world you hear so much about. Oh, I'd better phone Nicky. He'll wonder what's happened to me. Oh, Cliff, would you find Joan and see if she's ready to go home with me? Okay. Uh, tell her I'd like to leave right away before we... Uh, hello. Nicky? Did you think I was lost? Well, I came over here to Dad's with Hazel, and that's what's taken me so long. Quite all right, old girl. You're going to bring Joan, then? Good. <laughs> no, I've been very busy looking for a baby blanket for Jack. Yes, he's here, and he needs it most desperately. Right on. Well, Claudia may be able to locate that blanket when she gets here, Jack. When's she coming? Well, she's leaving right away with Joan. It'll only take them a minute or two unless she gets sidetracked again. I sakes, I no sooner get in the house, and off I go running some darn fool errand. <laughs> I don't know whether my career is the law or runner for infant females. <laughs> Barely cheerful about it. Huh? Might as well. I'm in it. And wait until you see this fool blanket. It's practically in shreds, but Mary Lou is in tears all the way down because she didn't have it. Yes, I've seen her with it. She drags it around with her every place she goes. We hardly can get it away from her long enough to wash it. Mm, probably mixed in with some of Claudia and Penelope's gear. If I don't find it here, I'll have to track it down someplace or not show my face at home. You don't suppose it's still up at the Sky Runs, do you? All I know is Betty promised her daddy would find it just as soon as we got home. So far, daddy hasn't come through. Yes, and daddy's getting pretty sick of the whole business. <laughs> I tried to tell Betty this would be a good time to break the habit of Mary Lou having it, but no soap. Well, isn't it just as liable to be over at Hazel's as here? Oh, sure, it could be at any one of a dozen places, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I've got my money on Claudia. Hey, hey I heard the door. That you, Claudia? Yes, Finally. Oh, here, Claudia, let me get this bag. I think Joan's got the heaviest one. Oh, here, let me have it, Joan. Oh, it isn't too heavy. Yeah, I haven't got a baby blanket in these, do you? Oh, this is Joan's luggage. She's moving back home from Paul's. Well, Jack's trying to locate his second daughter, Mary Lou's blanket. Oh. Oh, well, they found it, I think, Jack. What? Yes, Mom called out just as we were leaving and said if we saw you to tell you that they'd found Mary Lou's blanket. How do you like that? Where was it? I don't know. Well, Jack, you'll be safe in going home now, anyway. Yeah. I'd better be getting back. I'm sure there's a dozen jobs waiting. Thanks, Nicky. Quite welcome. Uh, you glad to be home, Joan? Hmm? Oh, uh, y- yeah, sure. Well, I'll be seeing you. Bye-bye, Bye, Jack. Bye, Jack. Had a wonderful time at the Sky Ranch. Thanks a lot for everything. Don't mention it. <sighs> well, here we are. Back at home again. Doesn't it seem nice? It does indeed. Where's Penny? Out in the kitchen with our Mrs. McCullough, I believe. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Positively everything is back to normal. Except Skippy. Quiet. Penelope's going to miss him. We're all going to miss him. What are we going to do with his little boy's room? That I refuse to consider at the moment. Well, Joan, how's it strike you being back? Seem like home to you? Oh, this house always seems like home to me, Nicky. Um, let's take Joan's bags up to her bedroom. All right. Here, I'll take one of these bags. Here, here. Let the master carry the luggage. 
Uh, here we go. I think he wants to show us how strong he is. Well, why not? Now, if you two lovely ladies will lead the way up the stairs, if you please. Come along, John. Well, Joe, you look like a couple of sisters walking along there. Well, that's a pretty thought, Nicky. Joan, dear, I think you've grown a little taller this summer. Oh, I thought I just about stopped growing. Or maybe you're just thinning out a little. Getting into the dips and curves department. What would you say, Nicky? My dear, at this moment, I'm concentrating on these stairs. I don't fancy a tumble with his luggage. Well, here, Nicky. Keep going, I... John, dear. Keep going. Yeah, there. Hmm, the house needs airing out and a thorough cleaning. Oh, I'll get the door. Go ahead, Nicky. Good girl. Oh, let's get some of the blinds up. It's so depressing with the shades all dry. There. That's better. Oh, I'll get this one for you. Any special place you want these bags, Joan? Oh, that's swell right there. Thank you, Nicky. You're quite welcome. And now, if you two charming creatures will excuse me, I'll go take care of a few masculine chores. All right, Nicky, darling. I'll go in and get our things straightened around just as soon as Joan settles. No hurry, as far as I'm concerned. It's jolly nice having you back with us, Joan, my dear. We've missed you. Gee, thanks, Nicky. I missed you, too. Well, now, go on down. Be taking me around below stairs if you want me. All right, Nicky, darling. Well, Joan, you had quite an experience this summer. Come on, Claudia, and sit down for a minute. Oh, here, sit here on the bed. Do you mind? Of course not. I'd love it. Did you really like working? Oh, I didn't work very hard. It was an easy job. And you enjoyed it? Oh, I adored it, Claudia. I hated to leave. Well, maybe you can do it again next summer, darling, if you feel the urge. Could I? And could I stay with Uncle Paul again? Oh, we'd have to talk to Paul about that. <laughs> and next summer is a long way off. Yeah, I know. Darling, tell me something. I'll try, Claudia. Are you sad about coming back to Nikki and me? Why do you say that, Claudia? Am I acting funny or something? Oh, I don't mean to. No, you're not acting anyway. You... Seem a little quiet and pensive, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not getting after you or anything like that. That isn't it. I just wondered if you were happy. Are you? Yes. You seem to be in such wonderful spirits all summer, and I... I sense that you seem a little depressed today. Well, I... You did want to come back home, didn't you? Yes. What is it, Joan, darling? Don't you want to tell me? You know how much we love you, don't you? Yes, Claudia. It was hard to leave Paul. Is that it? Yes. Oh, he was wonderful to me. I know. He's a wonderful person to be close to. You aren't the first girl to break her heart over him. But, darling, we love you, too, here at this house. We hope... We can make it so you wouldn't rather be someplace else. I wouldn't really because I... Oh, Claudia. Claudia. There, darling. It's all right. Go ahead and cry. Here, put your head down. Let me hold you. I've wished so many times you could do this. That's what a mother's for, John. Maybe you're just finding that out. Paul said I was learning how to love and... Oh, I do love you, Claudia. I do love you. You've just heard Chapter 13, Book 71 of One Man's Family. Written, produced, and transcribed under the direction of Carlton E. Morse. The opening chapter of Book 72, entitled Father Barber and His Three Sons, will come to you next week on a new day and time. This has been the final One Man's Family episode in this time period. The Railroad Hour, starring Gordon McRae, will begin on this station at this time next Monday night. The next One Man's Family broadcast will be heard Sunday afternoon, October 2nd. You're tuned for the stars on NBC. NBC.